chair of the Northampton Housing Authority, and I'm calling this meeting, our regular business meeting for October, calling to order at 531. Um, this meeting is being audio and video recorded, and I would like to please ask the secretary to call the roll. Yes, um, Madam Chair. Chairperson Carney. Uh, present. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Richards. Oh, I'm going to skip her for now. Uh, Commissioner Cancel. I saw him on here. He is here, but I don't hear him. He's muted. I'll skip him for now. Uh, Commissioner Brooks. Here. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Jones. Here. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Tarbutton Springfield. Here. Thank you. And I'll go back to Commissioner Cancel. Hi, I'm here. Sorry. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And uh, is uh, Commissioner um, uh, Vice Chairperson uh, Richards, has she joined us yet? Well, I'll take a look at all the participants. I have to change my view. Okay, um, I'll have to mark her uh, absent for now. Yeah, let me check because I know that she does plan on attending, but um, <clears throat> I'll just go ahead. You'll just keep an eye on that, please, uh, Secretary? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, good evening. As is typically our practice, we begin with a um, opportunity for public comment. And so um, I would like to let the secretary, if you can handle that too. If folks sure. just raise their hand digitally, um, if you can, and if you don't have the way to raise your hand digitally, once we get to the um, end of this public comment and you haven't had the opportunity, please just speak up. We'll make sure that we um, get your get your comment. So, so, so I'll uh, I'll call on the. Uh, Recognizing well, LTO first. Um, and so uh, I see in the order on my screen is the Walter Salvo LTO. I'd like to call on them first. Well, may I just may I just quickly interject there? I know I just said that the public comment, but it is part of our practice while we have everybody lumped together in public comment. The exception is that we start with LTO representatives to speak first. So pardon any confusion. Back to you. Uh, and, and Marilyn Richards uh, just joined. So for the record, yeah. uh, I'll call on Marilyn Richards for the uh, for the roll call. And it is five thirty four. Marilyn, can you hear us? You need to unmute Commissioner Richards. We know you're here, Commissioner Richards, and if you could find the unmute button, you could just announce your presence for the record. Well, we'll get back to that if we could just get back okay. and hold on, hold on, Marilyn, just so that we let people speak without interruption. And you could indicate to us when you think you've been able to unmute and then we'll, for the record, note your, your presence. Okay, Madam Chair, would you like me to continue with the public comment? Yes, please. Okay, so I'll call upon the Walter Salvo uh, LTO. Um, gentlemen, I, I, if you have any comments to make, uh, please do so at this time. You're, you're, mute, you're muted, gentlemen, mm -hmm. you're muted. I'm here, incidentally. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Alfred Chagnon from the Walter Salvo Local Tenants Organization, president of um, a few things I'd like to discuss tonight. One was an important meeting we had with the executive director over the Hatfield uh, property. She sat down with me and my board members. For two and a half hours, we discussed issues on the matter, worked things out, discussed things, and we all approved the um, Hatfield situation. Um, but since that has happened, and over the last couple of days of a couple of meetings I've been to, um, there seem to be some hateful people out there. Uh, some bullies, some hateful people that all they want to do is work on the hate 
part and not solve anything. We're here to for the health, the safety, and the quality of life of the Walt DeSalvo and the residents, not just in our particular neighborhood, but in all Northampton housing neighborhoods. We're here to work with the people that want to start an LTO and get one going. Um, the people have a few people in their development that they could get one going, but we're here to work with them. There's ways to get it done and we have to work together to get it done. With the bullying and the hatefulness, we are not gonna get involved in. Um, it's sad that it, it's out there, but uh, it's gotta stop. And we are not gonna get tied into it. And I just wanted to bring that up. Uh, as far as other things going on, we're bringing in some outside people for the health and safety of the people in the building. We are gonna bring in some um, special people to help out with uh, medical and okay. other things and health safety for the people. Um, but that's all I wanted to discuss. But, you know, I didn't realize what the bullying and the hatefulness was going on. I, I And so it, it came to me <laughs> and I'm not taking it and I'm not going to be involved in it. And I just wish those people good luck and I hope they with other issues besides the hatefulness and work together with the people to get things resolved. Thank you and have a good night. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chagnon, um, usually you have uh, other people that want to speak. Is Are you the only person that's speaking tonight? Well, today it's only just me and my vice president here. It seems like we're the only ones here tonight. Okay. Um, I why, but we are last week, uh, last month we had problems with the internet and it discouraged a lot of people from coming down, I guess, today. But uh, the internet seems to be up and running now. We got the big screen set up in the community room. Um, so maybe next month there'll be more people down to get okay. back. Can I ask All you, right. Mr. Chagnon, can I ask you, is your vice, did your I, vice chair intend to also speak tonight? Excuse me? Did your vice chair intend to also speak tonight? No, I'd just like to say that it's the Walter Savo LTO. We're trying to work on the healthy, safety, and quality of life for the Walter Savo residents in the community. And we're going to work with the executive director and work with the Northampton Housing Authority Board to try to better the situation for people. And that's it. Okay, thank you both for your comments, Al and Mike. Okay. And we also Holly. have another, oh, I'm sorry, Al, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, we're just looking for, for all your support so we can work together and, and make it a better quality of life here. <laughs> so we thank you for your support and we'll continue to look for your support. Thank you again for showing up and representing the uh, Walter Salvo. Um, tenant organization, and um, I know that there's another tenant organization. Is that correct, uh, Secretary Leeper? Uh, there is another recognized uh, LTO, Madam Chair, but uh, I don't uh, believe that they're here tonight so far. I will let you know if they, um, if someone from that organization joins. Thank you uh -huh. so much. I do see that you have one member, at least with a hand raised, one public member for public comment. I, I do. Uh, do you want me to continue on with my list or do you want me to go with, with the hands raised? Hands? Yes. Go okay. by the raised hands. Yes. Please. Okay. And so uh, I'll call on uh, Commissioner Tarbutton. Are you raising your hand as a commissioner or as a, a, a member of the public? It's a public comments. Actually, I'm not raising my hand for myself. I have on the phone a resident who hasn't been able to come and he would like a chance to speak if that's okay with the chair. He's a resident. Oh, yeah, you, you have somebody who would like to speak through your telephone or through your thing uh, to the rest of us? Yeah, let me see if I can get all this right. Okay, are do you, you there? Do you want us to uh, introduce yourself? Yeah, okay. yeah, I'm here. Can you hear, guys? Yes, we can hear. And would you please? Roy Martin, yeah, you one Con Street, Apartment 529. Hi, Roy. Uh, so anyways, I didn't hear the uh, first part of the whole thing because my phone it was muted. So... Uh, what I wanted to say was uh, I hear a lot about what's going on at Walt Stable House. And uh, I would like to say this. I was never in favor of the LTO. 
But now, I have to hear them from several residents, and I mean several residents, because they all come to me and talk to me. Uh, I was surprised at all the people that I got, all the friends. You know, uh, I've been hospitalized for a while, but I'm on my way to recovery. I'm on my way home. So, uh, when I get fully recovered and I get fully home, and I've got people to help me to do things at the house. Now, what I need is I need for the um, for Tara and the rest of them, right, to start working together. I, you know, I hear a lot about Tara's going one way, they going another way, and I hear how Tara is uh, going into getting all these different places. I told Kara before, you're taking on too much, Kara. You're going to make yourself sick like I did. I took on too much and I got sick. Now, I'm on the mend. But uh, please, Kara, please, that guy, start working with people. There's a lot of people that will work with you if you will work with them. So, yeah, but you have to work with them, right? Not against them, not fight against them, not want it all your way and nobody else's way. You know, uh, this is what, this is where it has to go. And I mean, the LPO, yes, now I'm in favor of it after hearing from several of the tenants and several tenants that didn't sign up. So, uh, and I think if we have enough sign up, I think there will be several tenants who will come to me, speak to me, and I will tell you, I will talk to them. And I think we'll end up with two thirds of the house will be uh, in the LTO. So, uh, thank you all, right? And to all of you, the tenants, right? I'm, I'm uh, on the men, right? So, I got a few more things to get to, and I'll be on my way back. So, uh, I see you have uh, beat the cancer, you know, one of them anyway, and, uh, and I'm hoping that the rest will be cleared up. So, uh, Please be patient with me. I'm going to be patient with you. I'm going to listen to what the tenants have to say. I, and who knows? I have terror. I, you know, who knows? So, behave yourself and be a good girl. Bye. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Yeah, um, Director Lieber, I, the only reason I mentioned that before is I wasn't sure if you saw the hand. So I'm going to just let you go through your list or hands or however you're addressing this now. All I right. appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. Uh, so I'll, uh, the next person I see with a hand raised um, is marked as Casey. Um, Casey, if you could please uh, state, state your name um, and if you're a resident here. Yeah, hello, my name is Casey. I live at McDonald and we're in the process of forming a group. Jane held a meeting. I couldn't go because I've been sick. I didn't want to get everybody sick. But yeah, it's going to happen, I hope. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wanted to speak a little bit on the gardens, not much. Uh, I, I, the gardens have saved me, basically. But I want to say that some people find it very easy to come and just take bags of dirt or plants or whatever. And so one by one, things just walk off and it doesn't go unnoticed. Um, I don't like it, but if that's, you know, the way it's got to be, it's the way it's got to be. It is a public space. I thought I'd hidden the dirt pretty well, but it's walked off. So um, I just wanted to say thanks for letting us garden. And uh, y'all, please, if people want to garden, encourage them to do it encourage them to be in touch with me or anybody else that works with grow food because we're willing to help we'll give them the dirt if they want dirt we'll give it to them we'll give them plants 
I, I don't like people stealing. Stealing is is kind of, you know, that's yesterday's news, man. We're adults now. We don't need to steal from each other. And that's all. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Casey. Uh, the next person with their hand raised is uh, Yasiri Castillo. Yasiri, if you could um, please feel free to unmute yourself and um, the floor is yours. Uh, good afternoon. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Um, I just want to say a simple comment. What is going to need to be done for the bully situation? This is now more people is talking about it and nothing is being done. I being, I complain about this issue in February. I had to move for one property, another one. And one of the people is responsible for that. Still in the chair. Nobody did nothing about it. And the responsibles is still doing the same thing. It's a lot of people, let me remind you, it's a lot of residents suffering mental health addiction and other condition bullying can cause so many things one of those days somebody's gonna be bullied by these people and something really bad is gonna happen somebody's mm -hmm. gonna end it uh people can get suicidal can relapse stuff like that this is serious this is not a joke this is not a joke it should be repercussions for these people and whoever have a chart should be taken out because they don't acting, they don't give an honor to their position. This is not a joke. It's, it's a lot of people with mental health, depression, a lot of stuff in addiction. This, in, this can cause a relapse really easy to somebody, including myself when I was dealing with it. And I still dealing with this. And depression, suicidal. You guys need to think that more carefully. And take this serious. It's not like a, it's a kid whining to their mom. Oh, mommy, my neighbor is took my toy. No, this is serious. This is legit serious. So you guys try to sit down and see how you can solve this problem because this is not a joke. It's going to happen something so bad and then you guys are going to regret it why you guys don't do something earlier. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the bullying is happening to a people by other people in NHA by residents because some people is bullying other residents because they're not agree with them. The witch, the witch hunting and the like the, the stuff is going on since more than a year. That's what I'm talking about. Now, Al is dealing with this with this situation. I've been dealing with the situation. It's a lot of bullying boards. Certain people who, like, if you not agree with them, they bully you, they torture you, they mental torture you, and bullying is not all right. What Everybody's the? entitled to their own opinion. And it's been saying in multiple meetings, and nobody's doing nothing because it's people from, uh, uh, unfortunately, it's people who is on the board who's doing this too. And nobody is doing nothing. And it's sad. And I'm just saying it's a lot, it's mental issues and addictions and residents. And some, some of these days, something bad is going to happen because mm -hmm. nobody took action of this. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, thank you, Ms. Castillo. Your your time is up. Um, we appreciate your comments. I just need to point out that somebody was blurting out and interrupting. If folks would please keep themselves muted while others are speaking, we'd appreciate it. I try to monitor so that I make sure anybody's um, microphone is off if they're not speaking on the floor. But anyway, apologize for that, for, for the interruptions and any confusion. Thank you, Ms. Castillo. And uh, previously, thank you, Casey. Back to you. Uh, thank you. The next person with their hand raise is, uh, raised is Angela uh, Santanello. Please feel free to uh, unmute yourself and uh, the floor is yours. Hello, this is Angela Santanello. I live at the Walter Salvo house. Um, and just listening to some of these comments that have been made, I can honestly say that I have actually been subjected to a bunch of this um, spiteful, 
hateful bully type mentality as well. And, um, you know, when you have meetings and, and LTO meetings, et cetera, everybody needs to have rules to follow and it needs to be clearly defined that, you know, how a meeting will be followed and whether or not people can interrupt as long as they have the leadership really um, providing those clear definitions of the meetings that will help tremendously. Sometimes residents get so involved and their emotions get so, uh, I guess you could say they're passionate about their ideas, but their ideas may not always be good for everyone. And the LTO is there to help everyone. And people mm -hmm. people don't necessarily understand sometimes that maybe, although they have a good idea, it may not be good for everyone. And that's been one of the hardest things with the Neighborhood Watch even, is working with residents and getting people to agree to disagree and try to move forward with a good resolution. Um, so that is that is definitely something that still does need to be worked on. And I hate to see that the LTO has been bullied because there's no need in any of that because these gentlemen that are leading the LTO are trying their best to do the right things. And um, there are rules that have to be followed and that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to work with the NHA just like the Neighborhood Watch has done for a long time. And as long as we all work together, it's gonna to be okay. Sometimes people expect things to be changed immediately and want instant gratification when there's a process to everything. So a lot of people just, they, they get worked up mm -hmm. and they have to take a breath and just reconsider what's going on too. So I thank you for working with the LTO because that's what's gonna make this a successful uh, LTO is being able to communicate with each other and working together. So thank you again, executive director. We appreciate you working with them. And um, I hope that y'all, the board has listened to this information about the bullying because this kind of stuff is very real. And it's not just necessarily bullying, it's also retaliation. Um, in our building alone, there's 192 apartments. That's a lot of people to have to get along with. And we've got we've got some people that tend to think that they've lived there long enough that they don't have to follow rules. But all of us signed a lease, all of us agreed to the same rules, and we all need to adhere to our leases. So, so that that's all I can say. Um, I know that Jose has worked really hard at at holding people accountable for lease violations, et cetera. So he's doing a, he's doing his job too. It's just most people don't see what's being done behind the scenes because that's not something that can be discussed with everyone. And a lot of people don't realize that. But I've seen it because I've seen the changes um, whenever the Neighborhood Watch has been involved. When we bring things to the attention of the NHA, they address those, those problems. So... I do believe that the cohesiveness between the LTO, the Neighborhood Watch, the management, I believe it is working. And I believe that um, it will continue to work as long as you continue to work together. So thank you for your time. Thank you, uh, Ms. Sampson. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see, the next person um, that I can see on my list is uh, marked as Z. Um, if you'd like to make a public comment, uh, you're welcome to unmute yourself and do so at this time. Um, and so I'll give you a moment to do that. Uh, and let's see, um, I'm going to uh, give you a moment to do that. And while I give you a moment to do that, it takes a second. Um, I'll go on to the next person. Um, uh, uh, listed as Gwen Nabod. Uh, Gwen Nabod, if you'd like to unmute yourself and uh, make a public comment, you're welcome to, to do so at this time. Might I suggest, Director Leeper, that we first um, uh, <clears throat> call on anyone with hands raised? Because while I, there are oh, many people okay. here, we're not sure that they all want to make 
a public comment. So, and then we can ask at the end if we've missed anybody that wanted to, but didn't have the ability. Is that okay? So I, I've already, uh, I had already called on everyone with their hand raised. I see, um, I see Joella Tarbutton with hand raised still. So, so she's been called on already. Um, but do you want that was for that was for Roy Martin? That was for Roy Martin. Okay, yeah. So I'll call on her a second time. Uh, uh, Ms. Tarbutton, please feel free to unmute yourself and make your comment. Uh, yeah, I didn't relinquish my time to talk because of another resident who wasn't able to come yeah. here. So yes, I forgot about that. So thank you, uh, Chair, uh, for allowing me to speak. I just wanted to say also, I did get my packet this uh, this month, uh, uh, and unlike last month, and I was grateful for that. I wasn't able to make any comments because uh, we had made an agreement in mediation with the mayor that I would go to DCC, but the management uh, is no longer there, so I'm not able to get onto the computer. So I'm asking my board if they would consider possibly allowing me to use, other than my personal email, one in the office or maybe even with the in the LT office, but I don't even know if they have a desktop, but those are things I would like to be able to be a fully particip uh, participating uh, member here. Um, so I, because of abuse <laughs> and bullying, <laughs> my personal email is off to, um, it's off the charts. I have to have a, I have to maintain a firm a boundary there. Um, um, one thing I wanted to say is that I, this weekend, I was able, no, October 3rd, um, I was able to complete all the requirements for the Mass NARO board certification. It's been a year long, back, you know, my Saturday weekends, uh, we've been dealing with this for a while. And I'm not sure, I don't know if you saw by rare hands, how many other board of commissioners have this, but uh, it's been, a, it's been, a, it's been, it's been good. It's been a very learning thing. Uh, I'm, uh, also, one of the things that I remember in the series of workshops that I have taken is professional relationships, where it talked about, you know, um, staff and residents and their relationships and the boundaries that we have to maintain, uh, because some stuff could be seen as a conflict of interest or and can be reported even to the Ethics Commission, so uh, State Ethics Commission, Massachusetts. So those are the things. So when I'm hearing stuff that goes on, I'm wondering what is the source behind that, where is that coming from? And so that's one of the things that I have to, that I think should be considered. And I think the board should also consider that as well. And also this uh, weekend, I attended um, a Mass Union uh, Public Housing Tenants uh, Conference that was held in Springfield. I'm not sure if it was the first time it was held here, but it was very interesting because when they're saying that either, you know, a management agreement or the case may be happened and the LTO is involved, which is a great thing because the PHN, which is the public housing uh, notices come from the um, uh, EOLC, is that it should also include um, uh, tenants. So when something goes on, uh, I'm not on the LTO, I'm, I'm on the... Um, uh, on the uh, NHA Board of Commissioners. And I was always very, uh, as you can see in the past comments, very supportive of them. I said, look, people go, going through growing pains, uh, allow that to happen. What I do, I've always objected is if a staff going and telling tenants about other tenants. And that's the thing I've said, and I've never seen any of the board address that. I asked the chair once to put it on the agenda so we can talk about it and it said it was an agenda item. And if not now, not here. I'm not gonna talk much about that because I am gonna be dealing with that on a, le on a different level. So I would just do that. And also I have to tell you is that people are talking about issues of people working together. There is a really great thing. Uh, I participated into it in staff. It's free for tenants who are having these issues. It's called the Collaborative Resource Group. Uh, it's out of uh, Greenfield and it's free to tenants. Uh, I've never seen issues about grievance here. I've never utilized that. I think the ED at one time said that the farms or whatever were in her office, but they're not there. So I haven't in all the uh, time I've been here. I've heard other tenants and other uh, uh, LHAs talk about it, but that is a resource and it's free. So, and I participated, the other person dropped out. So I, I appreciate it. I thought it was very, very helpful. Um, so also earlier this month, uh, I also have to say the issues in particular in the building. Um, yeah, I don't know. Something went on one time and people, if you can't talk about it, that's fine, but it would be really nice on a robocall to let people know that they're okay and it's safe. And it all comes back with the issues of security. I think the first time I ever tried to do a survey to ask residents what was going on and their main issue, and it seems to be all the time. And this happened also on Friday when um, some board uh, people came in and they said, what are the number one issue? Security, security. 
Um, I don't know why we don't have a security officer here. Last night, because I have to walk later, I'm gonna have to walk because doctor said so. So when I came in, I saw three trespass people come in this building. Uh, I didn't let them come in and it's not my responsibility to stop them and I'm not gonna put myself in harm's way. But if a security guard had been there, they could be dealing with this. And so it's not the tenant's uh, responsibility. I think it is the landlord. And I think money and resources for that should be um, prioritized. So that's why I personally have issues going in other places here because I think we need to take care of issues here. And also- Ms. Tarbutt, you're up, but you're going on five minutes now. So if you could wrap it five up. Five minutes. Oh, okay. Because the other people were, I just counted all of them. So thank you. But also there was a licensed therapist here at one time, a decade ago. I think they saved money to cut that position, but it's clearly needed as some people even say about the variety of issues and mental health issues that are going on. And I also have to say just one thing, this past week, and I want to thank the property manager and everybody else involved were uh, awakening with yelling and screaming and moaning. It seems like a psychotic break for someone, and it's really disturbing. I don't think I've heard the N-word as much as I've had here. It's very disturbing. I'm not uh, uh, dealing with issue with a particular tenant. If they got issues that somebody has clearly described, but the fact that this is going on, so I am asking folks, Get a licensed therapist in here. We have a Smith College who has a social work department. Licensed therapists, they can come in and help. Why are we dealing with this? This is not a warehouse for people with their issues. There are remedies and it should be of importance. And I just think that manager skills, if manager is going and telling tennis other things, that's a factor of managerial and leadership skills. So that's all I have to say on that. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton. Um, getting a Who's thanking me? Does the chair thank me? I'm confused. I hear people talking. I'm I, sorry. I, since I'm controlling the public comment, I thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. And I also so, threw in a thank you just as a courtesy from the chair. Thank you. Uh, so um, I, see another, I see another hand raised. Um, it's an employee. Uh, Wanda, you have your hand raised. Uh, please feel free to unmute yourself and uh, make whatever comment you'd like. Thank you. So I never hear um, the employees kind of speak on these board meetings. And um, I thought about it a couple of weeks before I decided to kind of chime in. And I can say that, you know, I'm, I'm fairly new to Northampton Housing Authority. I've been here over six months. I've been on every single board meeting since I've been here. And I like to take notes for every board meeting that I'm at, because I know that working at Northampton Housing at any time I could be sent to any building. I've been doing property management for a long time, um, both in elderly sites, family sites, veteran sites. So I'm pretty seasoned when it comes to um, the demographic of residents that we have the pleasure to kind of service. But what I can say is that I, I've, I'm, I'm hearing a lot about bullying, but you know, that I, what I wanna say is that us managers are also being bullied. So we are working very hard, sometimes till late hours at night to make sure that we do the best that we can for our residents. And I myself have been targeted or have been spoken to by a resident that is not even in one of my buildings. Uh, where I've been spoken to in a condescending manner or, you know, little things that, you know, um, you know, little talking behind the back and everything. And honestly, um, it is so hard for a manager to really dig their heels in and do what needs to be done in order to make your communities, a, you know, enjoyable place to live when we are constantly dealing with resident issues or resident bullying or several residents coming to us because a certain resident is saying this or saying that. And I think that if that were to stop and if the bullying were to stop and if the passive aggressiveness that I have witnessed here on this board meeting, which is out of control, if that were to stop and like Alfred said, and like Casey said, and like your theory said, and like Angela said, if we all just work together instead of, you know, using the passive aggressiveness or, you know, recruiting other residents to be against management, then we would be able to accomplish so much more. 
I can't speak for the other managers that are on here, but I can tell you that I grew up in this system. I grew up in public housing. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I got into this business is so that I can make a difference. And what I can tell you is, is that not only myself, but every manager that I've worked with here in the housing authority, including executive director, uh, Mrs. Leiper, she, she, we have all worked tireless hours to try to make a difference here. And all I see is us getting yelled at, us getting bullied, the passive aggressiveness, the underhanded comments, and we can't work that way. We definitely want to help you guys. We also have grandmothers and aunts and uncles and that are of senior age and that we know somebody, everybody knows somebody that is affected by low-income housing. We're here to make a difference. But we as adults need to put our pettiness aside and we need to work together because this is not an easy job. And I understand that you guys need the help and you deserve it. But if we are wasting our time handling petty issues because of somebody rallying residents together or a witch hunt, like your Siri said, then we are not gonna get anywhere. We're gonna go in circles and nothing is gonna get done. So with that being said, I just wanna say that I myself, because a lot of people here have said, well, nothing has been addressed here. We keep bringing it up, but nobody has addressed the bullying that the managers and the executive director have also had to endure. And that takes a, a physical and mental toll on us as well. We have to remember that we are not psychiatrists, right? We're not, we, we can't fix everything overnight. Rome wasn't built in a day, but if we work together, we can get a lot more done and we can be a lot kinder to each other as well. Respect is earned both ways and we want to be there for you, but it's hard when we have to write lease violations, this and that and this and that, and I have to call people in because you're recruiting people to work against us. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Wanda. Okay. Um Madam, uh, is there anyone else, if you could raise your hand, um, either virtually or not, there's other staff members, there's no other residents or members from the public um, that could raise their hand, although there is someone marked a laptop, so I'm not sure. I think that is an employee. Um, yeah, I mean, a person can just speak up if they don't have the ability to show their, to show their yeah. picture in their hand or digital yeah. camera. Speak up right now, please. Okay. Okay, well, thank you. As, as always, we really do value everybody speaking. It's very important for this board to hear from members of the public, whether they be residents or staff, or members of the general public of city of Northampton or state of Massachusetts. Um, and again, um, those issues that may have been brought up related to a particular tenant issue are being noted by management and there'll be some communication either during the month or at least a report back on how anything particular was being handled. I'm going to ask um, members of the board if we could uh, uh, dispense with the usual order of the agenda because the item on the agenda related to the renewal of the um, of the contract for, I'm trying to open up for the Hatfield Housing Authority is further on, I think under new business. And um, we have a representative from the Hatfield Housing Authority here, but is just taking a break from work. So I'm going to ask if it's okay with everyone that we move that item before all of the other uh, business items that we have to deal with. I, I have a question, a representative from Hatfield, could you explain a little bit more please? We have the chair of the Hatfield Housing Authority here. Okay, hearing no objection. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead, I'll ask the secretary to go to that item in the, I'm trying to pull it up here in my folders, to go to that item in the agenda related to the, um, looking at, oh, so it is under new business, under Roman numeral nine, uh, number two, and that is a motion to review the Hatfield management three-year contract renewal. Before we put this on the floor, I'll ask then if there's someone who will make a motion to approve for purposes of discussion on the board. 
to approve and second. So is there a motion to approve? Motion approve to approve. What? I'm sorry, point of information, approve what did you say, please? <clears throat> so under new business, under yeah. Roman numeral nine on your agenda, uh, item mm -hmm. number two is called a motion. Got that. To... I got that. I just yes. don't hear everything you're saying. So you want to bring this issue here and you're asking that there's a vote to, for us to do that. Is that all you're asking? No. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll answer. Uh, <clears throat> so what I'd like to do is bring that item to the very front of the agenda before we do, for example, the executive director's report, the minutes, et cetera. I'd like to bring that up because we've had a request from the Hatfield Housing Authority chair who was present and who was taking a little time out of work to answer questions for members of the board. If we could bring that right up to the top. And I didn't hear any objection, but in order for us to address the, the topic, I asked if there's a motion from the floor to review the Hatfield Management three-year contract renewal. I heard Commissioner Richards say, move to approve, and I have not yet heard a second. I saw Commissioner Brooks's lips move, but he's muted. I'm still muted, obviously. No, 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 we can hear now, you. We can hear okay, you. So, Second the motion. Thank you. Okay, moved and seconded. So um, I think before I turn, I, I think what I'd like to do is first turn this over to Director Leeper, who then um, can, uh, and actually for purposes of this, um, of this matter, I'll ask if there is also just a, a motion to recognize Alex from the uh, Hatfield Housing Authority, who's taken time out to come to the meeting to address any questions that commissioners might have. So may I please have a move to recognize Alex from the Hatfield Housing Authority? Motion to recognize Alex. Thank you, Commissioner Brooks. Is there a second? Second. Okay, so now that, now, um, <clears throat> Alex, you are recognized for purposes of this meeting and for this uh, agenda item. I'd like Perfect. to turn it over for an, oh, thank you. <laughs> Um, and I'll let you introduce yourself, but first let me um, turn it over to Director Leeper, who can give an overview of this for members of the public and for other members of the board. Thank Director you. Leeper? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, uh, as you all know, we, um, on an emergency basis, entered into a six-month contract with the Hotfield Housing Authority um, as their uh, executive director um, resigned um, and moved out of state. Um, it's a 40 unit elderly disabled community. And as I uh, indicated in my email, um, these uh, this little property's budget can only afford a part time um, executive director. Uh, that being the case, um, this housing authority has had a difficult time keeping long term an executive director in place because as a part time position, it's difficult to find someone that only wants to do this part-time um, with no benefits. Um, and so uh, after reaching out to uh, HLC, um, who recommended that they um, reach out to us for a management agreement, um, and because there was no time to find an executive director, uh, you know, we were able to enter a contract because it was an emergency. Um, we did so. That contract ends at the end of November. Um, their meeting uh, for October is um, this Wednesday in in a day and a half. Um, and at their uh, at their August meeting, uh, they uh, they asked us to um, ask the board to uh, enter into an extended contract because uh, they felt that we were doing a good job. Um, it is a small property. It doesn't affect the Northampton Housing Authority staff or residents. Um, what I've done is, uh, in accordance with the regulation, um, I met with the recognized LTOs, um, explained how we were handling that housing authority, um, how uh, which how we're handling it is. Um, Deb Dumpy Smith, who used to be our accounts payable person and retired, um, still works with us anywhere from two to four hours a month. Um, 
uh, or, you know, depending on our needs, she'll fill in when the accounts payable person goes on um, vacation. She also does our minutes, um, but uh, she will cover the office hours up there. Sharon uh, will then uh, do the accounts payable stuff. Um, and then I deal with the board stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, Pete and I and Sharon will deal with the capital stuff. Um, and that's typically after uh, regular business hours of Northampton Housing Authority. Um, so in meeting with the LTOs, um, I explained all that process to them and the need um, that these residents, some of which are, um, I have one that's almost 100 years old, uh, and some of them are in the upper 90s. Um, who wouldn't have anyone to answer their phone, who wouldn't have anyone to uh, take a work order, um, you know, to just do the simple tasks of, you know, daily living or man management operations. Um, and when I did that uh, explanation and, you know, is it income for the Northampton Housing Authority? It is. Is 20% of that income uh, part of the executive director salary? It is. But um, that little bit of money um, is not the reason why I think that you should do it. I think you should do it because they're your neighbors. I think you should do it because we would want someone to help us. Um, and um, both of your LTOs wrote letters of support, which I provided you copies of, um, to help these 40 apartments of elderly disabled um, residents um, for a term of three years. Um, it doesn't cost Northampton anything. It doesn't, um, you know, affect our residents. Um, and we've, we've, you know, found a little niche where we're able to help our neighbors and do so in a way that it doesn't create any negativity for Northampton. Um, Thank you, Director Lipper. I'd actually like to turn it over to Alex to introduce himself and um, just um, say, give some uh, words from the from the Hatfield Housing Authority. You're unmuted, Alex. Oh, okay. Um, Thank you. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Alex Malinowski. Uh, I don't know if all you guys can hear me or not. We can hear you. Okay. Um, so I've been with the Hatfield Housing Authority for uh, all of seven, eight years now. Um, little background on me. Uh, my grandfather actually started the housing authority back, I can't even tell you, but it's been umpteen years now since he's 82, 83. Um, I, I'm 25. I run a business with my family. I was born and raised in Hatfield. And uh, the reason I got on the board was because I, well, partially my grandfather and the other reason is, is I didn't want to see the elderly home go to crap. Um, I didn't want to see it be taken over or abolished and have these people nowhere to live. Um, when our executive director uh, resigned and moved away, um, we had two people or two uh housing authorities come in um and personally northampton which is obviously your guys's board um presented a great thing for us um they have been doing nothing but a fantastic job um they treat people with respect um they are on top of everything Oh, um, and I just hope that I can get all your guys' support, hopefully, and be able to let the Northampton Housing Authority keep us under your wing. I mean, we are a small, small authority. I mean, we only have 44 units, and three of them are still vacant. Um, so I just kind of came on here. Kara asked me to come on here and introduce myself and 
I thought it was a good idea, and uh, hopefully I presented myself well enough for you guys, and uh, hopefully we can get your support and love and are able to help us out through the next three years if you guys decide to vote on it. Thank you, Alex. What I'd like to do is, and if I hope you can stay on a little bit, because there are members of the board that may have some questions for both you yeah. and for Director Leeper. So I guess what I'd like to do is open it up to the board for anybody who has some questions for Director Leeper or for Alex from the from the Hatfield Housing Authority. Please just raise your hand and I'll, I'll, I'll direct you. Questions or comments regarding the motion to approve the three-year contract. Madam Chair, um, Commissioner Tarbutton has her hand raised. I don't know if you could- I'm sorry. It. Oh, you know what it is? It's the way it's set up here. It's under a, It's under the word that says recording. Commissioner yeah. Tarbutton, please. Yes. You're on, now you can unmute. Yes. I had to mute people before because there was extraneous noise while people- So folks, please just look down when it's time for you to speak, see whether or not you're muted. And you're good now, Commissioner Tar Tarbutton. Well, personally, thank you, uh, Alex. Um, I should say, fellow com uh, fellow commissioner, are you on the board there? I I, I want to welcome you. Come here, and I appreciate your perspective. And like you, I mean, I, I was raised by my grandparents, so I really do appreciate what you said about your family. Uh, I guess thank I you. have a question. <laughs> I guess my question for you is: How many other housing authorities were taken into consideration to take this part time position? And I'm asking him that, so I was just wondering if you could tell me. Um, how many did, that you know? Because you would have interviewed folks, I would have said. Yeah, um, there was only one. Um, and I didn't, they, they didn't present themselves well. Um, they didn't sit there and talk to us. It was more of, this is what we do, handed a packet and let us look through it. And that was it. And um, your directors came in and they were very polite right off the bat. And it was just, from that point on, for me, first impression means a lot. What, you know, you, you only get one shot at a first impression. Oh. And to me, Northampton did it the best and they have been keeping their word on everything they've said. Well, well, thank you. I guess I have a question with that, too, if I may, uh, Chair. Yes, sir. Yeah, take a follow-up, please. Okay. Well, oh, thank you. But if I, if, if memory serves me right, that happened in May, and our executive director wasn't a part of that presentation. It was from the assistant executive director, Jack Redmond, and perhaps Sharon Kimball, who came to make the presentation. Is that true? Because I, I definitely know Jack Redmond is incredibly personable, so that part I do know. But I'm wondering, because um, I think... Uh, Executive Director Leeper was out until probably mid-September um, on on leave. So um, I, I just wondered who, 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 I don't know if it was a full, you said it's the directors. One is an executive director and one is probably a team. So I, I that part is the part that was it's a little confusing. And the thing is, I would like for you to know, because I ask questions, if some people perceive that as bullying, I, I'm do, I wanna do my job and I'm sure you wanna do your job and so, Take what I'm saying in the spirit that I'm deliver that I'm delivering it. I'm going to probe questions, and I'm on many different boards and committees, and I I have the same heartfelt things that I talk about regarding poor people, people without housing, people who need food, and uh, I only get it and hear the background that that's bullying. But um, so I'm just curious, who was in that meeting that that presentation? And um, I'm going to be yeah. honest with you, I am terrible with names. I am I have to see them face to face. I was told by my by my old executive director, who was Brenna, um, that Kira wasn't able to be there physically because she was on a uh, medical leave or whatever she had going on. It's her personal business, um, and she prepared a presentation for her. I don't know if it was Jack. I, I don't know the names that were there, but there were three people there from what, when I was sitting in the chair. Would it help to, um, Commissioner Tarbutton for that to be clarified? Because um, when Jack and Sharon presented that to us as a board, they identified themselves as being the folks that made the presentation. It was Jack Redman 
Sharon Kimball. Yeah, the only reason why I asked that because I'm really impressed that he said presentation. You're right, I'm an actor, so presentation is very important. But I was, you said it was better than the one uh, other one. And I was just saying, if the executive director wasn't there, it was those who presented the package. And they're, they're not here, and one is not even here anymore. Uh, uh, he's at Greenfield Housing Authority. So I just wondered, and I'm also wondering, I, I think it's great, and I, I want you to realize, Mr. Alex, is that helping neighbors, helping neighbors, oh, my, that's a wonderful thing. Uh, my concern as a tenant, more so than a commissioner, is that some of the issues that we have here that have been going longstanding a decade old. And my question is, it's like, I just, I, I cannot understand EOC who wait till they all leave. Why aren't you preparing? I'm on another committee and we're already preparing for our executive director to leave. Nobody ever wants that to happen, but you prepare for that. So you're not in an emergency and scrambling. And it doesn't seem right. I know in one position and one other management services, a woman who would have applied had she known about it. So was the effort to get more people out there to know that there was a position available? Did you broaden your search? Because uh, I hear that a lot sometimes, nobody did it. And those poor people, I'm dealing with poor people here in one property who need help. So I'm not saying that that's not gonna happen, but the, some of the things in the presentation sounds great, but in reality, I'm finding it's a little a duality with that. So, and I wanna just ask you and everyone else, how is this as a tenant, Savo House, how is that gonna help tenants here in Savo House who need so much, there are about 10, uh, I can't remember the rest of the properties, who need help. As I just said, security for over a decade have been asking that. We have some incredible health issues, but I, who need help here. How is Alex, it going to help them? Alex, do you feel like you can address part of the questions? Because I know Commissioner Tarbutton addressed that to a number of people, not just you, but also to members from our local tenant organization. And I'm not sure that we have them we're able to recognize them to participate in this. But for, for the part, for example, if you can just let Commissioner Tarbutton or the board here know to what it, what was your process in terms of outreach for folks to um, it, take a management for, contract. Thank you. Yeah, for for us, it, it's, it is such a small housing authority. Like I said, it's only 44, 44 units. For us to hire an executive director to be there, part time we don't have a big budget we don't we don't have the we don't have the funds necessarily to do that so for for northampton to come in and help it, it it's not going to affect anything with you guys it's more of just a guidance for us in for the fact that uh, w why we didn't broaden our horizons on looking for an executive director, it was a last minute decision by our ED of what she had to do. And that was her personal business on what she had to do and why she had to leave. So it really wasn't a, hey, I'm going to be leaving in six months so we have six months to find someone it was it, it was kind of it was a tight situation for us and the state recommended um you guys and um i can't think of the other housing authority so excuse me on that um and we ended up going with you guys Does that answer your question, Commissioner Tarbutton? Um, yes, it did. And again, I want to appreciate you for being a part of that. I think in this part, as opposed to the other parts, getting tenants involved, we now have an LTO and that was involved and bringing in other people, the personable part, I think it really is a, it's a really good step in the right direction. And, um, but I, um, I just don't see how it's going to be able to help residents here. And for that reason, as a board commissioner, I'm going to vote no. And I wish you all the best. Um, but I think that it's the conglomerate thing. You know, it's like everybody's opening that and it's not giving small. I know about your budget. We have a lot of budget. And I do know whenever I've asked for a scholarship to go to further trainings, they give it to LHAs like yourself who don't have enough budget. And I respect that immensely. 
but I'm not, I'm just, I, I just have a problem with one person doing so much. I think you even heard one tenant who, who really thinks the world of, of the ED here, who said, you're doing too much. You're not, you're, 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 you're doing too much. So that's my only thing. And the, the very fact, and I'm not quite sure about this, so I probably shouldn't say it, but what was the thing to get the LTO to sign off on that? I didn't get that. I haven't gotten that in my packet. So I don't know what they said of the recommendation. And I know you were asked to come here. So I haven't gotten that, but I was concerned when someone said, I, I'm writing something, is LTO not here? And I finally got our money that we were waiting for for two years. So that scared me because it's like, your money is yours. That hadn't, should have nothing to do with writing a re referral or whatever the case. So it worries me uh, when stuff like that's going on. And I just want to make sure that there's no impropriety whatsoever. Not saying that that is, but I'm the one who wants to check for that. And uh, it's a concern. So it's for those reasons that um, mm -hmm. I, I, I am concerned. And so the board is going to decide uh, based on their findings, but I have some concerns about it. And that's why I'm saying no. But I do, again, appreciate you. Thank you, Commissioner thank you. Tarbutton, and thank you, Alex, for answering those. I do want Absolutely. to give other, um, you, you, you say that we have other uh, board members who have a couple of questions. I noticed uh, Commissioner Jones has his hand raised, and then following Commissioner Jones, uh, Commissioner Richards, please. Uh, Marilyn, I think you were first. Why don't you go ahead? Oh, thank you. Ahead. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. I, my hand kept, kept going down. I just wanted to try to get the kind of the facts uh, clear in my mind and exactly what we were going to be voting on and kind of leave out the rest. But uh, can you tell us, um, Alex, uh, what kind of staff do you have and what they do? We have um, one maintenance guy. His name's Vince. He's been there for quite a few years. I, I can't remember how many years. I'm, I'm sorry on that. Um, and he mows the lawn. He snow blows uh, the sidewalks. We um, hire out a plow company. So he's kind of stepped back from the, the snow blowing because he's he is an older fella. Um, but he does any maintenance that he can keep up on there himself and any bigger projects or our cat projects or whatever, that's all that, that has nothing to do with him, but like uh, he, you know, fixes stuff inside the, um, inside the tenants rooms, if need be, if it's something simple, um, we're, we're pretty much, he, he's our maintenance. He's our maintenance guy. Like he does, he, he's very talented with what he does. Um, actually a little off topic, sorry, but, he actually used to work for my father back in the day, back when we had, because we got a, a farm and back in the day, he used to work with my father when we grew tobacco. Um, but back on subject. Um, so he's been now with the housing authority for quite a few years now. And I mean, we, he does anything that we ask him to do. And, you know, he, he's very, very great. Very, it's no, no hassle with him at all. So, so if I could just interject a little bit um, uh, for you, uh, uh, Marilyn, uh, because it's such a small housing authority, um, the state has a team that they call RCAT, which handles essentially all of the capital projects. Um, and so um, they, um, they handle all the capital items. Um, I do have Pete who has our um, his construction license go up and just kind of converse with them a little bit about that when there's questions. Sharon handles the financial parts of that um, and pay in bills. Um, and, and so I utilize what I consider my executive team for that. Uh, with respect to the presentation, even though I was on medical leave, I did in fact uh, help put the presentation together and spent hours on the phone with HLC, uh, with Brenna, with some of the board members um, and putting and and with my team, um, so although I wasn't present for the presentation, um, I did participate in uh, putting it together. Uh, so the maintenance guy uh, does all of that. Um, Deb currently spends two days a week. Um, I've spoken with the board in having her there only one day a week because, again, I had mentioned she retired. She wants to go back to one day a week. 
Um, we're going to have a property manager probably do that because she doesn't want to be uh, 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 unretired. And um, but we're going to work through those details if, in fact, the board approves uh, the continuance of this process. Um, but I hadn't made those decisions yet until we met tonight so that we could know whether we we're going to go forward or not. Thank Commissioner you, Richards, does that, does, does that thank answer you, your questions? Alex. Um, okay. Yes. Yes, okay. Thank you. Thank you. And you can have a follow up too. I mean, I'll just let, well, I'm, I'll turn I'm, it over. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Richards. Commissioner Jones, please. No, I really think um, Marilyn kind of stole my thunder where I was going because it was a question about um, how the maintenance was being done and then Kara kind of finished it off. So I'm just trying to get a sense of how many, how many actual hours a month um would be do would be devoted to this um i don't expect an exact answer but you might have a ballpark figure um because well, from the, about the an stuff hour. i read it, it does not seem like um it's a it's a huge lift i have about an i i want to say you know collectively um you know maybe with deb uh a total of maybe seven and a half and Sharon equally that Pete maybe maybe four um and myself between myself and and supportive staff you know maybe one day uh but these are all done around the housing authority uh the Northampton housing authority um except for Deb who is retired so that that's a, those are monthly numbers yeah those are monthly numbers <clears throat> uh, so, except for Deb except for Deb um, gotcha. So they only have, you know, they have one meeting a month, uh, you know, in September, they weren't going to even have a meeting. We ended up having one, but it was virtual. So, um, and uh, their meetings are at 630 in the evenings. Um, so it doesn't even affect Northampton Housing Authority hours. Um, and um, uh, again, Deb, what we'll do is we will... Um, we will have a, a property manager probably go and do the office hours if we continue um, one day a week, uh, just so that, um, you know, Deb's not having to come out of retirement. You know, it was just going to depend on whether we continued this on a long-term basis or not. Okay. Thank you. That That's essentially all I had. And uh, thank you, Alex, for stopping by. Absolutely. Thank you guys for your time. I have one and, other question. Uh, the well, hold on, hold on one second, Commissioner Tarbin. Um, and and thank you, Commissioner Jones. May I first go around, Commissioner Tarbin? I'm just going to ask the other commissioners first, and then I'll I'll come back to you for another follow up. Uh, Commissioner Cancel, did you have any questions for either Alex or Director Leeper regarding the matter at hand? Hearing none, how about you, uh, Commissioner Brooks? Anything you'd like to ask? You need to unmute, I'm sorry. Almost there, not yet. I'm, I'm watching the little microphone to see if the slash through it. There it is, you're good now. Oh, you had it, for, there you are. I'm good? Yes, you're good. And I'm good with no questions. Oh, okay. Perfect. Thank you, Commissioner Brooks. I'll ask once again. I'm not sure if maybe um, Commissioner Cancel wasn't able to find his mute button or it sounds like he may be good. So I'm going to then go back to another follow up. Yes, Commissioner Charbutton. It might be for you too, Alex. So um, stick around. Grim. I want to thank my esteemed colleagues for bringing up those questions about maintenance. It went over my head. So that was very clarifying. So I do appreciate uh, that information. I guess my other concern that I didn't. Um, concern is that we're still on an audit and uh and I unless that's been clarified and we're cleared uh from that and that's the part that concerns me and one of the parts when I read about the audit that came from um uh the, 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 I mean I saw the word strike one but every month we have to keep saying we haven't had that cleared and you went first so I don't know if anything else happened and again I didn't get that information from you because there's a somewhat of a problem with the community uh uh, information getting to me. But the part about the audit that was of concern, and I know there were three concerns about getting various bids from vendors. And one of the responses that went to about 30 things was, it said, I can't quote it verbatim, but because of lack of staff 
and high absenteeism, the, the, this NHA, Northampton Housing, wasn't able to upload that vital information. So my concern is, and one of those people who supposedly do that, it would have been the ED Cara, Jack Redman, who was here, and Sharon. So if you don't have the staff and the time to do that for this agency, that's my problem by going somewhere else with that because it affects us. And I do, um, I do, I do wish that there was a way that everyone could work collaboratively, particularly with the, the maintenance staff and snow and all that stuff. But I'm wondering, is yet another ma a management agency, and I'd like to know exactly, well, it doesn't really matter how much the ED will be making from that. And I wonder exactly with all the management agreements that we have, what is her salary, including all of that. And I don't see how it trickled down to us, but that doesn't mean that I don't recognize and respect the offer for help. I just think that it's not thought thoroughly and it's only involved in this agency. And I think that there could have been some other solutions. But again, I don't want to waste more of your time, but thank you for the issue regarding the maintenance and the staffing stuff. That's important. But I just wish that you were able to expand it. Uh, Commissioner, I, I mean, uh, Director Leeper, um, that was a, a question kind of amidst a, a lot of other things. But the question I heard from that, <clears throat> excuse me, was how does the matter of the agreed upon procedures that we've been carrying month to month, how does, sorry, my button, how does that matter around the AUP relate to this? And I think that there were some other questions that seemed more rhetorical. I don't know if you could even answer those regarding, as I think oh, you've done I mean, that. Yeah, but if you could give it your best shot, please. I mean, we had our PMR uh, on Thursday and um, we haven't gotten the, uh, re the rating uh, official reading yet, but uh, the state said we did a very good job. Um, and the state indicated that they were closing the AUP findings because we had given them everything that they had asked for and then some. Um, and uh, I presume that she hasn't sent that over yet because I need to upload uh, two documents to Chad and one document to her, which I'll be doing tomorrow. Um, and, um, um, I think she asked about salary, uh, the contract I think is, uh, 43,200 and something. I, I don't have the exact number of that on uh, any ED that's there gets 20%. That's how the state works it. Um, they make the determination. And so it's 20%. Um, and, um, Let's see, the rest is determined, you know, of course we have to pay Deb for when she goes there. Um, Sharon would get a small, you know, a portion uh, for the time she puts in. Uh, you know, I try to be fair across the board for anyone who puts in um, any kind of effort to help. And then the rest goes into uh, the general fund for the housing authority. So it's income for the housing authority. Um, and that's true of all of the uh, contracts. Can I ask a follow-up then, just a, a clarifying question? Um, I, I think I've heard you say, not just once, but a couple of times, that this is really formulaic. It's really yeah. determined entirely by state regulation in terms yeah. of how, how that, how whichever amount of money that the, that the contract is for, how that's broken up in what departments. And I think you've clarified that for that's us. That's correct. Just, okay. like an, just like a, an executive director contract, a management agreement um, uh, for a housing authority is also a formulary uh, amount um, based upon HLC's form and entry of numbers, um, and they drive all of that. They drive the amount that's pay that they are uh, that the housing authority is allowed to receive and pay for both agencies, um, and the duration um, and um, and what portion of that total amount is allowed to be paid to the executive director. Okay, thank you for that clarification. I wanna ask once more, or at least give one more opportunity, Commissioner Cancel, um, I can look at my screens a little. And, and hearing none, um, I think what I'd like to do then is ask if there are, <clears throat> are any other comments that commissioners would like to make before we move to move the question to a vote. 
Um, anybody have some last minute, Commissioner Tarbutton? Yes, yeah. your hand is raised. Yes, yes. thank you. I, I would like the, uh, uh, the ED to ask, it gross, how much are you making from all your, it's public knowledge, so to ask this is, I wouldn't otherwise ask people what they make, but you have the position with East Hampton, and I believe that contract was three years for 130,000. I'm not exactly sure what the salary you're getting here at Northampton Housing Authority. I'm not as sure exactly, even if we're dealing with Cummington and Huntington, or if they've been combined in this. So how much are you making on a gross level? Because my calculations are one thing, but I'm curious, because I'm my mind is saying, is it a quarter of a mil? How much are you making a year from all your management services on a gross level? Director Leeper, I would ask you, please, if you could tally all that up, take some time rather than it just be off the cuff. This is an answer. that. Is, so if you could actually generate an answer for that for Commissioner Tarbutton, and you could send that to her directly so that she has an, an understanding of that, and then she could make comment about that during during next month's meeting. Sure, I just right. don't want I mean, to be we'll on. Be, put on this. We'll be presenting the budget to, to you all. Next okay. Month anyway, and it'll be okay. Easy. And then oh. I'm sure there'll be questions yeah. regarding this particular okay. thing. I'm having problems with the email, so that's why I was wondering. I can get the information here, but you could do as you like. But I if was you just could just get, uh, pr print it out and slide it under her door, maybe that sure. would be helpful. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Then, are there any other questions that folks have before we move the question to vote? So, um, Alex really needs to get going. Maureen, do you? Then, yes. Let's you let's move let the him... question. Uh, yeah, I'm Alex, sorry, Alex, Alex, you can go. We'll just let you know what the vote was. We're going to take it right now, but you don't need to. Yeah, stay. no, no. If you guys want to just take it, my dispatch called me. I got to call him back. I'm I'm a truck driver, so sure. I, I drive trucks yeah. for a living. So we really appreciate you showing moving. up. Yeah, yeah we really absolutely. appreciate Thank it. Thank you guys for having, okay. you're, having you're me. Here. Giving me the time. Thanks again. So, Commissioner Tarbutton, I'm sorry, not Commissioner Tarbutton. Who's there? Uh, Director Leeper, please. Would you uh, please call? Oh, I'm sorry. Commissioner Richards has her hand raised for one more comment. Yes, please. Oh, but you'll need to unmute. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, there you go. I think this conversation has been a little bit confusing to me anyway, but I think I'm clear. I guess what stands out for me, um, we've already ha um, heard Commissioner Tarbutton's feelings on it. But I feel like um, Hatfield is our closest neighbor and we're under one congressional district that, you know, they're teeny, teeny, tiny. And if we can, I think I would be um, inclined to uh, help them out. Thank you, Commissioner Richards. Um, and I guess then I'll close up too that <clears throat> similar feelings um, regarding that, I mean, Having been in city government, I know we've relied a lot in many different um, departments on mutual aid, for example. I know in our fire and safety and a number of, when cities and towns um, have a concept that sometimes we're gonna need to help each other out. And <clears throat> I kind of see this along those same lines. And I think when you're saying congressional, you might be referring to the state house. So. Bo so uh, uh, our oh, sorry. in North um, in Northampton, <laughs> our our um our state representative <laughs> represents Northampton and Hatfield. That's our state representative's jurisdiction. Northampton and Hatfield, as if as if no 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 no. I'm just trying yeah, to cover. Just with it's just it's as if Hatfield is a little bit. We only hate to say stepchild, but you know I mean the state does kind of think of um, Hatfield as connected at least with regard to how they uh, um, <clears throat> how they give state resources for representation at the at the state house so i do know that this was something also that was supported initially by state representative lindsay sabadosa um, as well as um, state senator uh, joe pomerford um, <clears throat> so for those reasons um, and because we've done a great job from what i can hear and uh, that we are we've been appreciated by Hatfield Housing Authority. I would it's hope that we can carry know. that on. Okay, okay. We, we hear that, Alex, and um, yeah, we don't want <clears throat> we don't want to let you down. So I, I do want to um, express my strong support for this three year contract as well. So I guess with that, Director Leeper, if you would please call the roll. Yes. 
uh, to renew Hatfield management contract for a three-year term, uh, Chairperson Carney. Yes. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Richards. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton Springfield. Absolutely not. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Cancel. No, um, I wonder if Commissioner Cancel has lost his connection or audio he, or something. He, he's he's come yes. On. Sorry, I do have connection issues today, but um, my vote is yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner uh, Madam Cancel. Chair. Uh, with five yeas and one nay, your motion carries. Okay, thank you very much. That motion carries. We can move back on to our our regular order of business. That next item would be Roman numeral number six, the executive director's report. I just want to say, oh, I yes, just, please, please, yes. I, I just want to say thank you guys so much for uh, having me on here and uh, hearing me out and uh, being able to help us out through the next three years. And I hope all you guys have a great rest of your night and hopefully we'll talk soon. Thank you so much for coming and you're welcome anytime. Bye. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Drive safe. Okay, come, um, Director Leeper, you're up for the executive director's report. Yes, thank you. Um, Executive Director Summary for October of 2024. Our GPR was uh, $215,433.95. Uh, we collected $215,413.95, which was 100%. Uh, for that uh, month, we took, uh, we had public housing at 263 uh, recertifications uh, for the month. Uh, Section 8 had 55. Um, we had 31 uh, public housing certifications that did not get done uh, due to paperwork not being turned in. Uh, they've either been, uh, we've already either been chasing the paperwork or it's been turned over to legal, eight with Section 8. Uh, federal applicants, one bedroom, we have uh, 99. Two bedroom, we have 28. Three bedroom, we have 24. Four bedroom, we have two. And Section 8, we have 58. For the state applicants, uh, family housing, we have 32,439 applicants. Elderly disabled, we have 11,170 applicants. We had one public housing move out and four Section 8 move outs. We had 43 public housing move-ins and eight public house, uh, Section 8 move-ins, and we have no, uh, no units on notice. Um, end of month vacant ready were 15 and vacant unready were eight for a total of 23 uh, vacant, 13 of which were pre-leased and we are processing six champ lists. We completed nine make readies, uh, nine of which were complete rehabs. Uh, we took in 273 work orders. We began the month with 43 outstanding and we completed 222 work orders and we have a hundred that are outstanding right now. Uh, we had no follow-up issues from the prior month. Um, the events that we held this month were uh, the health department continues to visit our senior sites, providing blood pressure clinics on a weekly rotation. They've scheduled vaccine clinics at our properties this month and will be administering both flu and COVID vaccines. Uh, the flyer is hanging in the com common areas at the properties with instructions on how to get uh, an appointment. And if uh, there are any questions, uh, we encourage residents to contact one of the RSCs. The foot care nurse has been scheduled to go to all of the properties on a monthly basis beginning this month. Um, there were flyers inside of the newsletters for dates and information on how to get appointments. Um, we've we've started to see an uptick in those appointments um, as a, uh, residents have stated that it's become very helpful. Uh, lastly, Grow Food Northampton has had to make the difficult decision to not have their winter markets this year due to the end of one of their major funding sources. Uh, they'll continue to come every week through October as planned and then pause until April or May. As an agency, we are sincerely grateful for Grow Food Northampton and the invaluable support and resources that they provided to our residents, and we look forward to having them back in the spring. So ends the executive director's report. Thank you, Director Leeper. And as usual, for members of the public or any board members with any specific questions or concerns, please send them to Director Leeper fire her email and we're going to move right on to the next item of business roman numeral number seven which is the approval of the september regular meeting minutes so i'll ask please is there someone who will move to approve 
And I know, I'm sorry if I keep muting you, but I have to do it because um, in between, there's a lot of rustling. Commissioner Brooks, you're muted, and I think you're trying to move to approve. Motion to approve. Thank you, Commissioner Brooks. Is there a second? Second. Okay, moved and seconded to um, <clears throat> approve the September regular meeting minutes. There have been no additions, corrections, or deletions submitted as requested um, in advance of the meeting. So I'm going to ask the director to please um, go right to the, to move the question and go right to the roll. Yes, approval of the September regular meeting minutes. Chairperson Carney. Yes. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Richards. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbot and Springfield. No, I wasn't able to make any corrections without any access to the computer. And uh, no, there's too many. Okay. I'll take Thanks. it up somewhere else. Thank you. OK, Commissioner Cancel. I think he said he's actually having some voice issues, not even really technical. I wonder if there's and maybe connection, too. So we can't see if you could put a thumbs up even. Can you hear me you... now? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, yes, yes, sorry. That's a yes. Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. Thank you. I'm sure four yeas and one nay. I'm sorry. I think that's five yeas and one nay. Five yeas and one nay. I apologize. Yes. That motion carries. Thank you, everybody. That moves us right in now to the area of unfinished business, under which we have two items. Um, the first one is what has been referenced already a couple times in this meeting, which is that status of the fiscal year 2023 agreed upon a pr procedures action plan. And as we've explained in the past, this remains, if there's no update, this is re this remains. I think Director Lipa, you might want to just reiterate what you just said regarding the, it's not an update, but the understanding that you have that this matter is closed. They just need to actually give us the confirmation. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, uh, Carolina did say when she got back to her office that um, Friday she would send me an email. I have yet to receive that email. Um, so I, I, although I do have a lot of emails right now, I'm working on them. Uh, so I think she may have forgotten. I'll be reaching out to her, asking her for, you know, uh, if she forgot me, um, saying that it's closed. But she verbally did tell me that she's gotten everything and that the board should consider the matter closed. Okay, um, then I think we don't that we'll move right on from that, then that will continue automatically continue to the next meeting. It won't appear if um, everything gets closed, except for a report that it's all done. Otherwise, it'll appear just as you see at this time as a formality. The I next have a clarification I need to ask about that if that was if that was all right. Yes, please. Um, yeah, I know. I think you mentioned the AIP. Um, regarding that, but I was also wondering, did you get all the information in for the PMR as well? That's, I don't know, and that's not on this. Um, well, it was I'm about the, it was about the uh, audit, but if if you don't know about it, that's fine. Thanks. Okay. Um, so, with the next item then is the uh, motion to adopt the revised bylaws upon the positive recommendation of the Governance and Policy Committee. So, first, I'll ask if someone be, would put that on the floor. Motion to adapt. Okay, is there a second, please? Second. Okay, moved and seconded to adopt the revised bylaws. And as you see in your agenda, <clears throat> under that folder, we have the um, the revision listed. I, I, I'm i gonna also, if, if Commissioner Cancel is willing and able to, um, to discuss some of this, point out the, the the revised draft, essentially, after approximately seven hours of meetings, I know we had two separate meetings. One was um, um, at least two and a half. We had, we had two meetings at which there were also um, in attendance, attorney Jeff Driscoll um, and attorney O'Connor and um, the board member, I mean, sorry, the committee members, uh, Commissioner Cancel and myself. And then also at one point, uh, Commissioner Richards was asked to give a um, kind of a historical perspective on on some of these. And all at, at the upshot of all of those meetings were the document that you see in your packet. And 
really the way that that is different from the previous from the previous set, the current set of minutes, I'm sorry, bylaws, is that upon advice from attorney Driscoll, especially anything that was really a reiteration of state law or a copy and paste from contractual documents or any of those things should not be in our bylaws just because those, because the laws are fluid and they change and the contract um, is always going to prevail because it falls under contract law. So in order to eliminate all of that confusion, we left it to what you see now in terms of the set of bylaws that really refers entirely to the operations of the board. There were some other items that, um, and again, all of us who were there did agree that there were important things to note, such as, but there were aspirational goals um, and um, possibly, basically that we do want to work on a separate document in order to include those as our vision, like goals and visions, but that it wouldn't be appropriate in a set of bylaws, it could cause confusion and actually could cause some legal problems. So if, if that, if, if maybe I would just turn it over then to folks to ask from Commissioner uh, Cancel and from me, um, particular questions that you might have about, about this revision. And now I get to look and see who's raising their hand. Or any comments, Commissioner? Commissioner Cancel, is there something you'd like to add regarding our process over those many hours of meeting? No, I actually like uh, your summary very much. That's um, exactly what um, uh, we had discussed. Uh, and um, uh, we did um, discuss um, creating a separate uh, document that uh, expresses our um, our mission and our vision, uh, whether that's extending our current one or um, um, or revising it or uh, whatever we may have. Uh, but a lot of that language that we took out of the um, bylaws uh, would actually uh, be very appropriate for uh, such a document. I, um, you know, if we wanted to have some kind of retreat at some point and think about our vision or our mission, yeah. um, that would certainly be appropriate. Yeah, and I agree with, with Commissioner Cancel. In some ways, you know, it, it having this committee does help in terms of doing all of the down in the weeds sort of work that we did kind of administratively, but I think it would be more appropriate to have some sort of uh, session um, that would involve be more inclusive of the whole board to to draft up a revised um, mission statement. It could be something that would at a, at a less busy um, regular business meeting, especially if Commissioner Cancel and I can pull some things together that would be you know uh, documents as prompts or from which to work. But I do think that moving on to doc that the creation of that document would be better um, done and and would be more accurate if it were to involve more than just the governance and policy committee. So that being said, are there any, if there aren't any other questions, I'll ask if maybe we can move the question to just at least adopt this revised document. Madam Chair, our... I had my hand up. I didn't know if you saw me. No, I don't see the, oh, it's under the little record button. It's maybe I have to move you to a different spot. Commissioner Cancel, I'm sorry, Commissioner Tarbutton. <laughs> we do look alike, they say. Um, I just wanted to say, firstly, thank you for the information that you gave. I'm actually kind of, you know, as I told you, been taking courses with uh, uh, attorney and, e and executive director Driscoll. And uh, so I do appreciate his input on there. I do also want to thank you, uh, where's the chair, I can't find her, for us, for suggesting that the board be a part of this. I've been on this board four years. I got on this board for you, before you got on this board, uh, Chair Carney, and I've never been a part of any committee or subcommittee. And it is a feeling of being left out that I, I really just, uh, I, I'm, I've been incredibly unsettled by that. But I do, I did look over it. You know, I didn't get my stuff last month. I did look through this. I did, but there's just something for me going over documents. Maybe it's the teacher in me, red highlight, going over these things that I would have liked to contribute it. I feel I'm kind of like cut off with the voice with some of this. But I do see some of the stuff that went in. And I don't necessarily have a problem with 
what has been presented. I do appreciate Driscoll's clarity and all that stuff. I would have liked to have been a part of it. And for the fact that I'm being excluded, not purposely, I don't know why there's not as many com uh, committees or you know, someone who wasn't on the committee came here and that this is going through. So for that reason, I'm gonna abstain, but I actually am quite impressed with what's been going on. And I look forward to being a part of, you know, the revisions or uh, uh, updating the mission. And I think that all of our board, there would be lots of things that include all of the boards. I know that that's been a mention of concern regarding mediation, that that has been noticed. So I would hope that all the board would be a part of it too, and that we all become fully functional. That would be really nice. And I appreciate it, thanks. But I do want to point out to members of the board, because maybe there was a misunderstanding. The reason that we double posted this meeting, the Governance and Policy Committee, we double posted it as both that committee meeting and a full uh, Northampton Housing Authority meeting was because the intention has always been that people could participate. Some people did. In fact, members of the public participated. Members of the public came and provided input. And actually, it was a working uh, a working group that was very inclusive. I'm so sorry that, Commissioner Tarbutton, that you misunderstood that or didn't hear it was written in writing, and I think it was also spoken. So hopefully um, you'll, continue, you'll t continue to participate uh, the next time at our next Governance and Policy Committee, is should you have anything to um, anything that particularly interests you and, and join in as always, and has been made clear. Always yes, 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 oh. Director Lieber? Director Lieber, yes. Yes, I'd like to just point, just, I just like to yeah. point out a, um, a correction on page six. Um, Needs, needs to occur with the date. It just says amended and it says August 19th, 2024. Uh, that date needs to change based on tonight's vote to uh, instead of August 19th, 2024. If you, uh, if you choose to um, accept these changes, uh, that date needs to be changed to today's date. Would someone offer that amendment, please, just to amend that line on page six? You said page six, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Would someone please offer the amendment to, to add the today's date to page six of the document that we're voting on tonight? Anyone? Commissioner Cancel. Just because the chair doesn't usually offer motions or amendments, I'll do it. I'm sorry. Move, uh, okay, yeah. okay, go ahead. Yeah, Just move to uh, amend. Move to amend yeah. to our. Right. Move to amend uh, uh, to include the uh, today's date. Very good. And is there a second? Second. Okay. So moved and seconded. First, we'll vote on the amendment, and then we'll vote on the entire document. So, uh, Director Leeper, if you would uh, take the roll, please, on the amendment first, yes. and then we'll move right to adopting the full document. Yes. Uh, on Person the amendment. Martin. Yes, on the amendment. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Richards. Say yes, please, Marilyn. Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. Didn't hear her uh, call. Commissioner Jones. Say yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Commissioner. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Yes, Commissioner Tarbutton. This is this for the amendment? Yeah. Yes. State amendment. Yeah. Commissioner Cancel. Yes. Thank you. Um, okay. And so now would you like me to call the roll for the actual bylaws? Yes, I understand that that was unanimous on the amendment. So yes, if you could please call the roll on the um on the document itself. Yes, motion to adopt the revised bylaws upon positive recommendation of the Governance and Policy Committee, Commission, uh, Chairperson Carney. Yes. Thank you, Vice Chairperson Richards. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton Springfield. Uh, I'm going to uh, abstain. If you'd wanted me to be a part of this, there's a way you could have gotten to me. So no, oh, that's the reason. Thank you. Commissioner Cancel. Yes. Thank you. Um, okay. Five yep. yeas and one abstention. Yes, thank you. Okay, so that motion carries. And under new business now, we have already taken up the, the, the matter of the Hatfield management contract. So there's one more item under new business, and that is to approve the application and certificate for payment for number three, FISH document 214121 for 34169 before we ask for clarification, I'll ask if someone will put it on the floor with a motion to approve. So moved. Moved. And is there a second, please? Second. Second. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So now it's on the floor, and I'll ask um, Director Leeper 
Yes, could you clarify this item for members of the board? Yeah, uh, yes, this is for the 24 inch electric stove replacement phases uh, two and three. Uh, this is contractor application payment number three. Uh, the original contract sum was 172,000. Uh, and this is uh, current payment due of 34,169 and 60 cents uh, to uh, Summer Electric. Um, and um, uh, this was signed off on by uh, Tom Boyer, the construction advisor from EOHLC on September 24th of 2024. Okay, so commissioners, is there a question for Director Leeper regarding this item? Commissioners? Okay, hearing no questions, I'll ask then for the secretary to please call the roll. Yes, uh, motion to approve application and certificate of payment for fish num uh, payment number three, fish 214121 for $34,169.60. Chairperson Carney. Yes. Thank you, Vice Chairperson Richards. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbrett and Springfield. Uh, I'm going to uh, uh, abstain, but had I got that information in time, it would have been definitely yes. Thank you. Commissioner Cancel. Yes. Thank you. Madam Chair, five yeas and one abstention. Okay, that motion carries. Um, thank you, everybody. That brings us to the end of our agenda. Um, before we close out again, I want to thank all the members of the public for joining us tonight. We really appreciate your interest in the Northampton Housing Authority. And um, I know there's one final motion to be made that's non-debatable. Motion so, to adjourn! Sorry. We need a second. Oh, we're stuck here all night. Thank you. <laughs> okay, moved and seconded. All those in favor, you can just say aye. 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 Thanks aye. again, everybody. Appreciate it. Have a great night. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.